Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today we're gonna to talk about how I sorted four days worth of footage for an historical film that we produced for a museum. Check it out. Save it for conversation. Welcome back to the edit bay, everyone. Today we're gonna to be going in depth on how I sorted all of the footage for an historical film that we produced for a local museum here in the Omaha area. I feel like this is an important thing for us to take a look at to see exactly how I organized all of this footage for this project because there was quite a lot of it. So there were a few things that we had to strongly consider with this project. First, we were gonna have a lot of footage from four days of filming. Secondly, Kate was gonna be in the edit bay with me during the post-production process. And because she was there obviously directing the film and I was there as well producing it, we needed to be able to find the shots very quickly that we wanted to put in different parts of the story to make sure that everything was set up and prepped and logged in a way that when Kate sat down to work on editing this film with me, we could really edit at the speed of thought. We could stay in the creative flow and really power through an assembly cut instead of, again, spending our time dealing with disorganization, trying to find clips. Where was this thing? Oh, we took that shot of that rifle. Where is that? Whatever it was that she could be thinking about in any moment, I wanted to be able to immediately pull up those clips. So let's take a look in Final Cut at how I went about organizing all this, the things I really like about what I did, and some things that I would do differently if I did another project like this in the future. So we've got the project open here, timeline down here. Again, this isn't the normal workspace that I work in because uh, I'm doing this on a single screen where I usually have Final Cut split between two screens when I'm editing. But you can see here, I have all of my Final Cut organization. If you're new to the channel, this way of organization has been brought up several times in my Final Cut videos. I'll link to the video above that goes a little bit more in depth about how I organize my footage for both YouTube videos as well as paid client work. But you can see here, I've got an event for project, which is where all the Final Cut timelines reside. I have one for all of my footage, I have one for audio, and I have one for stills, one for graphics, and then one for content. So I really like to look at the events as a container for all of the different types of media that I'm going to be using in an edit. We're gonna be spending our time in the footage event, and uh, if I carry it down here, you can see that I have some organization going on with a parent folder here called A-Roll. Now, A-Roll, at least for me, I typically refer to that as interview footage, and then the B-Roll is the footage that's sprinkled in um, over those interviews to you know keep things interesting, keep the audience engaged. I'm calling this A-Roll for this project because all of this footage that would normally be B-Roll if we were interviewing somebody is my A-Roll because there are no interviews, and it's all stuff, you you know, as you can see here in these thumbnails, it's all footage that was shot inside of the home of General Dodge, the historical figure that we are making this film about for our client. So we have the A-roll folder, and then below that I have some folders that break down all the keywords that were used to organize the footage, and then some folders for the different days of filming that we did. Now in these folders, you can see that I have a smart collection. And what I did was I wanted a smart collection to be able to collect all of the footage from day one, day two, day three, day four. So I made a smart collection that had uh, the criteria of the date and the day that content was created noted it, you know, with this is. So content created is and then the specific day that we were filming. Now this only works if your camera is set to the correct date. So you wanna make sure before you shoot that you have your camera set to the correct date. And then you can create smart collections that filter all the footage based on the day it was shot. I did this because if Kate's sitting down next to me and she's like, no, it was the third day we were at the park and we were filming the trees, I can immediately go to day three's filming and take a look at all the footage for that day. So it's a very helpful tool. Now in all of these folders, uh, for day one, day two, day three, I have a folder that contains all of the different sort of camera information keywords. So you can see that we have, you know, our real numbers uh, and different things like this. I, I wanted to preserve that because if something ever happened where like data didn't get transferred properly or a colorist or a sound person was referencing the different reels or whatever, I would be able to quickly pull up what we needed for the footage that pertained to that more technical information from the original camera files. So you can see here I have this folder called All Keywords, and when I carry it down, you get just a ton of keywords. If I click on any of these terms from animals, <laughs> which has a dog in it, to article, which has an article hanging on the wall, to bank office, 
the different clips that were shot in the bank office at the historical home where we were, uh, a bed, biography, bird bath that we filmed, the Black Angel, which is a sort of a nickname for a statue here commemorating the general's wife, uh, different shots of books, a bridge. So these keywords are all listed here so that if you want to zero in on a very specific shot uh, the having to do with a very specific item or maybe um, an emotion of what the scene's going to be. This is one way to do that. Now, I did not rely on these keyword collections during the edit process because as you can see, as you scroll down, you're having to read all of this stuff to try to find the footage that you want to use in your edit. And this can be very time consuming trying to go through all this. So what I did was I logged my footage in a way that would allow me to use the event browser's search menu to very quickly zero in on the clip or footage that I was looking for. I'm gonna scroll back up here and go to all keywords. And you'll see this is gonna populate with all the different clips. And you're gonna see here this notes field and it is notated with all of these different search terms. So what I did was I went clip by clip, analyzed what was in the shot, and then typed in the notes field all of the things that came to mind when I looked at this shot. The other thing is we had a script for this and I knew based on some of the scenes that we were doing certain certain words would be relevant to those scenes or chapters of the finished film. I was able to think of some of those things as well, not only in terms of this is the Dodge House, this is the library, there's a rifle in here, the solarium is visible, but that this may also pertain to topics like war in the West or General Dodge and his relationship with Native Americans. Same thing down here, you know, we have this clock, it's in the library, it has something to do with time, so if we're editing and Kate's like, I need something that, that, that works with time. I can just type in time up here and all the shots that are noted with time are accessible. Now here we have a phrase called passage of time where we specifically film things that would be good to sort of transition between moments and, and pass along, you know, several years in the, in the narrative. But you know, this quickly lets you zero in on a specific object, mood, whatever, in all of the footage that you have. And that's really the power of the event browser. Now here's the thing, going through every single clip from four days of shooting, looking at it, playing it back, scanning it, and then typing in all of the different things that you think that clip makes you think of or, would, or, or what that clip would connect with in the story that we're telling is incredibly time consuming. A lot of you may be looking at this and going, that is way too much work. It would be much easier for you to just dive into the edit and maybe sort of log this stuff as you go, whether you keyword it or make some notes about it or even build some timelines. And if there's like a timeline with uh, that's labeled war, pulling every clip that has to do with war and just dumping it into that timeline. I think honestly that those approaches would be a mistake. Although this took an incredible amount of time. I think it was uh, almost two days of work to go through all of this footage and do all of this logging of every single clip. It saved us a ton of time during the editing process. And if you think of the editing process like this, you're sitting there with your director and you're dropping a couple clips in the timeline. And then you're thinking to yourself, well, we need some a clip like this. We need a clip like this and then a clip like this. You go into your event browser where all your footage is and it's not logged like this. You're looking through, scanning all of the clips, trying to find the one that pertains to the three things that the director wants. Let's just say it takes a couple of minutes to find that clip because you're searching through four days of footage to try to find it. Maybe you don't remember it was on day one. Maybe there's uh, a couple of clips that you're confused by or misremembering. The bottom line is all that extra time over the course of weeks of editing is going to add up. Let's say it's just an extra 30 seconds and you're in the edit bay on a 20 minute film for a few months. I mean, these things can take a long time to build, revise, 
work on, especially this one, which has so much sound design going on in it. With this method, where you've entered all this information in the notes field, making it searchable in the event browser. Now with having logged everything, if Kate's like, I wanna look at all of the portraits that we have of Dodge and his family. I just type in portrait. Everything that we have that is footage of a portrait comes up in the search results. And we're zeroed in on just that. And now we're just looking through a few clips to find the exact one that we want. Let's say she wants to cut to the insert of the map of Illinois. I can type in Illinois and it pops up. Now, if I wanted to do this using the keyword method, if I had keyworded the shot that has the map of Illinois with the word Illinois and created a keyword collection, I would have to scroll down and find ABCDEFG. I'm kind of looking at the alphabet and then click on that to get to it. And that's great but it takes a lot longer than just doing this. Let's go ahead and clear that search result. I could just type in Illinois. And that's why it's important to log your footage in the notes field. So if I had to do this all over again, I wouldn't make keyword collections like this because these aren't searchable. There's no way to search for a specific keyword collection. There's nothing up here that allows you to search for it and then just immediately be taken to that keyword collection. And if we didn't have all of this information in the notes field, I wouldn't be able to type in these search terms to pull up this footage. The keyword collections would be better than having nothing, but there's so many of them that it just becomes too unruly to deal with. And I feel like you just spend a lot of time trying to go through all these keyword collections. Now, if I could do it all over again, what I would do is I would spend my time using all of this keywording in the notes field, and then I would spend my time sorting all of the footage based on the script. So if we have a chapter called war, if we have a chapter called uh, February 1855, one called homesteading, if we have a chapter called the beginning, I would make keyword collections based on that. And then after I'm done logging all of this footage, I would be dragging the different footage into the chapters that it corresponds to. Now, not every piece of footage is gonna correspond to one of those chapters. There's some that are gonna kind of be filler for other areas, but you could use keyword collections like passage of time, transitions, and find the footage that you filmed intending to use it for those purposes and put it in those keyword collections. And then over here, you would have far fewer keyword collections than this big list. You might have, let's say, a dozen keyword collections pertaining to, again, the different chapters of the script and maybe different devices for the storytelling. Again, something that shows passage of time, transitions you between different chapters, things like that. What I don't want to be missed here is how incredibly powerful it is to be able to search your footage immediately while you're editing and find the thing that you want to use. So I was very thorough in creating the different keyword items that I entered in the notes field when I was logging footage. Take a look at how quickly I can pull things up in this. So let's say that Kate wants me to pull up a shot of a typewriter. I can type in typewriter and there it is. The one shot that we have of a typewriter is immediately visible instead of going through and scrolling to try to find it or going over here to the keyword collection, going all the way down to the T's, scrolling down until I find the keyword collection for typewriter, Q, R, S, all right, almost there. Oh, here we go, typewriter. Now I have it. To go back to all your footage that you wanna view, you have to click back on the parent folder to, to go back to your original. Whereas with this, you can just clear the search field by hitting the X and you're back to looking at all your stuff. What if Kate wants to look at the shot of the alligator thing that was in the bank room? There it is. Here's the shot where that starts off on this alligator in the general's uh, display about his banking history. What if we wanna pull up the rifle that he was given? Here's a shot of the rifle that he was given to commemorate the completion of the Union Pacific Railroad. What if there was that shot outside that had the frog in it? And we want to pull that up. Now we've got the shot that had the frog in it. What if there's a shot that had, oh, Lincoln in it? Here's a shot of uh, the dining room where Lincoln had dinner with General Dodge, but then also this bust 
of Abraham Lincoln in this office. Now there's an even extra layer of organization beyond this. You can see in all of these clips that I have them marked with green to note favorites. Let's go ahead and drop these clips down in size a little bit so you can see all of the favoriting that I did. So after I got done logging all of this footage in the notes field, I actually went through and favorited all of it to make sure that the only parts that were favorited was what the camera operator cinematographer Michael Hennings intended the shot to be, even if he had multiple takes. So you can see that we've got all of these moments that are marked in green. Well, if I sort this with favorites, I'm going to have only the favorited clips pull up. So here's something that's a little tricky with Final Cut. If you favorite a bunch of portions of a take, those favorited portions don't have the keywording and logging attached to them you have to copy and paste them into that favorited clip. Let me show you. So we'll go back to all clips and you can see here we've got the little carrot, right? So let's go ahead and select all and then arrow over. And you can see all these favorited clips also are logged. So not only can I search all of the raw footage but after I went through and favorited every portion of a clip that I thought was usable in the finished film, I logged those as well so that they were searchable. If these were just favorited and this, this information wasn't here, I wouldn't be able to search for these clips when I'm just looking at favorites. So if we go back to this view and look for uh, rifle, it's gonna pull up all of the portions of the shots of the rifle that I had favorited. So now I'm only looking at clips that I will actually use that aren't the camera jostling because you know we didn't cut on picture and we're sort of resetting the dolly move. Uh, we have Dodge's razor blade and this just pulls up the portion of the shot that was favorited. We have a comb. Here is Ruth Ann's comb and it's just the portion of the shot that was favorited, this rack focus that we did. What about um, the peacock? This shot of the peacock wallpaper, and it's just the portion of that shot that we would actually use, the part that, the, that Michael, our cinematographer and camera operator, intended to be used in the edit, not the stuff that's him getting ready to to like reset his move or try over again. So this is part of why it took two days to prep all of this footage, but I wanted to make a commitment to myself as the editor to put up with the painstaking and tedious process of logging all of this footage, knowing that again, once we got into the edit with Kate sitting next to me, she would never be stopped in creating. And I, as the editor, that I wouldn't be like scrolling through this trying to, which portrait is it? Oh yeah, wait, I could just type in military. And there it is. Now, that being said, there are some serious limitations to this search feature. So you can see here if we type in, if we type in mustache, right? You get a couple of different clips. You get this one and you get this one. Now he's at a very different age here. You have middle age and then you have old age. So if you want to try to search for mustache old age, you can't just type in mustache old age and have it pull up all of the clips. You have to just type in mustache and then sort through whether you want the old age one or the middle aged one. So as powerful as this is, it does have some limitations. So my hope is that as Apple continues to evolve Final Cut Pro, they can start to figure out how to make the event browser's search functionality much more powerful by allowing you to search multiple terms. Now this notes field is one of the metadata fields for all the clips and you can actually see in your inspector here that you can access it here as well. So if you don't wanna type in to the notes field here by clicking and then making it typeable, you can also do it over here on the uh, inspector tab. Now an extra layer of awesome when you've taken the time to do this is that once you put these clips down in your edit, all of this logging information is still attached to the clip down in your edit. So let's say as you build your film, you start to need to search for things in the timeline to zero in on a shot. This is where the timeline index comes in. 
Again, you can see the notes field here has all of those terms from the notes field up in the event browser, and you can use the timeline index to search for things that are in your timeline. So let's say you need to go to some of the shots that you noted about his mustache. And there you go. Every shot where this is featured is accessible in the timeline. What if you need to find the shot of the dog? Well, I've got dog barking here in sound effects, but I also have over here the shot of the dog. There it is, uh, a picture of him with his dogs, and then the dog on the chair, because I did all that work keywording. All right, so what if you need to find um, the dining room? Here you go. That's an object in the dining room. This is in the dining room as well. Another shot of the dining room. And the wide shot of the dining room. That's in there twice. So what if we want to find the different clips that show the rifle that he used, but we don't want it to pull up the sound effects because we have a ton of sound effects that are labeled with the word rifle. We can come down here and click on video to make sure it only sorts through the video and type in rifle and the two shots of rifle come up. Now, what if we do want to just look at the audio? Now all of the sound effects that are a rifle are come up in the search results. Or you're working in your timeline and you have a note from Kate or somebody else about the Russia map. And you don't want to sit there and search through your timeline trying to go, okay, where is it at, where is it at? You just type in Russia and bam, it takes you right to where it is in the edit. And there it is, the map of Russia in your edit. I mean, it's just incredible how powerful this tool is, especially for filmmakers that are dealing with a ton of footage. Now, a feature film, of course, has a ton of footage. This, I think, especially pertains to documentary or historical film filmmakers, where you have so much footage from all over the place with different objects, different meaning, different different rooms, different people, and to be able to enter all of this information in order to have this kind of power in the edit bay, to me is remarkable. And I cannot tell you how fast it made the process of building our assembly cut of this film. So again, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to spend the time at the beginning of the edit process when you're wearing your assistant editor hat to log all of your footage. It's worth it. Again, it's a painstaking process, typing all that, thinking of what it is, coming up with the keywords, staying disciplined about doing it. It's incredibly difficult. Get yourself a cup of coffee, put a movie on, the Apple TV in the background, play some music. Just know that you're gonna spend a day, two days, a few days logging all this footage so that when you get to the edit process, you are able to stay in the creative flow. You are able to not look like an idiot in front of your client or your director as you try to search for footage that they're asking for. The worst thing that you can have happen when the director sitting next to you is, hey, pull up that shot of the Russian map and you're sitting there. Oh, let me just find it real quick. Oh, oh okay, I think, uh, yeah. oh yeah, here it is. Versus, yeah, let me just pull that up real quick. Russia. Here we go. Which one do you want? Yep. Okay. In and out. Yep. Got it. Done. Boom. So I appreciate y'all coming along with me here, taking a look under the hood in Final Cut in this project specifically, seeing how I keyworded and logged all of the footage that we shot for this project over the course of four days, and how doing that process, two days of hard, tedious work, allowed us to edit this in a much faster, more efficient way. A way that we were much more creatively filled during the entire process of editing it because of all of that hard assistant editing work that was done at the beginning. Like I said, there's a few things I would do differently if I could do this all over again, but that's the whole point of this process. You sort of hatch a plan at the beginning, you think you can kind of see the future and know what you need to do and what you don't need to do, and you dive in and you do it. I'm gonna take what I've learned and apply it to the next edit, of course, but hopefully you got a glimpse uh, looking at what some of the powerful tools are in Final Cut, especially in the event browser, which to me is the second best feature in Final Cut next to the magnetic timeline. It is an incredibly powerful tool between favoriting, showing what clips you've used, what clips you haven't used, 
being able to log all of your footage and make it searchable, it is an amazing way of organizing and sorting all of your footage without having to make a bunch of timelines of selects and sequences that are pancaked on top of each other while you copy and paste from one to the other. It is all just done up here in the event browser and it is amazing. Add to that the timeline index and how because you took the time to log all of your footage, you can make your whole edit so easily searchable whether you need to zero in on a specific sound effect or a clip, your entire edit is searchable. And again, those notes that you took while you logged your footage are searchable as well. There are some limitations to what the search field can do and pull up, and I'd like to see Apple make some enhancements to that so that it can search things in, in groups of words so you're not just limited to really searching for one, one term at a time. Hopefully Tim Cook is watching this video and taking notes and going, you know, we really need to help that Mac guy out who's living out in Omaha, Nebraska. We should really uh, get on this, everybody, and, and, and make those updates. <laughs> One can dream. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. Again, everyone, I appreciate your patience while I sort of rambled and stumbled through all this. These bigger picture tutorials can be a little bit more difficult for me to boil down in, in more simple terms. I just kind of have to show you and talk you through it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. You all know how much I love to reply to comments. So if uh, you need some extra insight, please hit me up. I can always follow this up with another video if this brings up some questions or points of confusion. Other than that, I think that's going to do it, everyone. Like, share, subscribe, click all the things. Really appreciate you supporting the channel. And until the next one, I will see you all soon.